Hello and welcome to ET Studios AI Horizons in association with ET CIO. Now, as the old adage goes, health is wealth. And now with AI, I think it's become even costlier or perhaps I would say priceless, in fact. And to talk about AI in health, I have with me Ninad Rajay, who is the CITO and CPO of Health Assure. Now, Ninad, you had told me that CITO and CPO stand for very unique terms. If you could tell our viewers too what they mean. Thank you so much, Shilpa, for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure to be a part of this particular show. And as you mentioned, uh, health is wealth. It's not an old uh, adage. It's absolutely true for the new age as well. In today's day and age, especially, health is absolutely required. It's of the prime importance. Coming back to the CITO and the CPO sort of acronym, you know. Mm. Uh, CITO stands for uh, Chief Information and Transformation Officer and add to that the CPO, which is Chief People Officer. Mm -hmm. And it's a very unique sort of a combination. The reason behind this is the Transformation Officer mm -hmm. is supposed to and responsible mm -hmm. to transform not only the business and the processes, mm -hmm. but the people as well. Mm -hmm. If we don't change the culture of the organization, mm -hmm. there is no way that processes and business can be transformed. The first and absolute important aspect is to transform the way people think, the culture, the attitude, the mindset, the way people act and behave and so on and so forth, as a result of which the entire transformation comes into picture and the business and the process transformation becomes easier. That's exactly where the CIT and the CPO comes into picture. All right, also help me understand Health Assure is a health monitoring platform. Um, to be very honest, uh, Health Assure uh, stands actually for all sorts of healthcare services. Health data is the most sensitive data there is. So how do you use AI to secure and make sure that this data is safe? Absolutely. I think that's a very pertinent question. And in today's day and age, because especially about the data concerns, mm -hmm. privacy concerns, and the DPDP Act coming mm -hmm. on board, it becomes uh, all the more important for people like us who are not only keepers of the data, but analytics and so on and so forth. So first and foremost, we need to have a a very good governance practice, you know, around the entire data. And even before that, whilst we are capturing data at that particular point in time itself, consent is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, we get the consent from the customers uh, for the data point, for that data keeping analysis and, and so on and so forth, storage as well. And then further, what we do is we anonymize the data. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we publish that data, or even we process the data, mm -hmm. we completely anonymize that. So gone are the confidential information uh, which can be uh, taken back or linked back or mapped mm -hmm. back uh, to the customer, right? So uh, we anonymize that. That's okay. one uh, aspect of it. And the second aspect is when you talk about AI, mm -hmm. we use AI in such a fashion that uh, it, of course, helps in anonymizing. Okay. Second is it helps in making sure that it is compartmentalized. It is categorized, categorized into confidential, into private, and into public domain now as well. Earlier, what used to happen, it was all manually done, right? Now, we use AI to categorize these data points, which also helps us to manage and maintain and protect further that data and further process it as well. So AI actually is certainly helping. Essentially, it is helping us not only quicken and fasten the entire process, but safeguarding our data points as well and making sure that we are compliant with the various government rules and regulations that keep coming on mm -hmm. board practically daily basis. Yeah, nowadays. yeah absolutely. <laughs> right? You have to keep an eye out for all those notices right. coming in. So how do you make sure this agile transformation with AI to uh, ensure there's compliance with all these new rules? Right. Uh, and it's a very challenging question, to mm -hmm. be very honest. See, AI is a very new uh, sort of uh, technology, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, everybody is dabbling with it. Everybody is talking about it. Everybody wants to mm -hmm. kind of have that. Everybody wants to use that for business benefits uh, <laughs> as well. From a technology standpoint, and I come from the technology uh, background, techno-commercial mm -hmm. background as well. Now, I had the opportunity to lead a lot of uh, portfolios, but the main portfolio of the core portfolio is, uh, uh, has always been technology, right? So... Whenever we see this entire new age tech coming on board, you know, we are like kids, we are curious, we want to, you know, see, we want to check, we want to access, we want to use, and we do all those, mm -hmm. all those things. Uh, predominantly from the healthcare standpoint, you know, uh, AI has been really beneficial, to be very, very honest. Uh, and how? One is, um, there's a vast 
vast amount of data. Now it's humanly not possible to to mine all that data. Now how does one mine that data? Yes, maybe talking about data mining and so on and so forth. But AI coming on board, what used to take probably uh, weeks and days, it can now be done in minutes and seconds. So first and foremost is the the main benefit, the most essential benefit of AI coming on board is speed. Mm. Okay, so it has brought in that speed. It has fastened that processes, which now with the help of which we can sort of use, make use the same time doing something else, mm. meaningful activities and so on. So that's the first uh, uh, aspect. The second aspect is it also is helping us from the healthcare standpoint uh, in uh, triage support services. Mm. Right now, uh, what does that mean? Mm. Uh, it means that earlier there used to be human element involved. Now it can be done remotely as well. You know, there would be remote, uh, remote triage support given through video calls right. with uh, telemedicine uh, mm. as well. Uh, there are certain elements, there are certain gizmos, IOTs mm. uh, involved where you have variables. You mm. know, earlier what used to happen is to take a lot of time for data to pass from mm. the edge uh, unit uh, to the main sort of the mainframe computers, mm. right? Now with the AI coming on board, it's easy because the processing can happen on the edge, edge technology. The AI can analyze it on the edge itself mm -hmm. and then pass on all the information uh, to the central point. And that saves time. That, mm -hmm. save, that also brings a lot of analytics in place. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of which, we can quickly go back to the customers mm -hmm. or even to the patients saying, you know what, this is something which is wrong. Mm -hmm. You need to kind of take care of it. There's a problem with your health. And... That's where this entire prescriptive thing comes into picture, okay. you know. So AI is helping in different types and different modes and different models for us to get back to the customer mm -hmm. and ensure that they live a healthier life. And when it comes to the speed and accuracy of medical diagnosis, how is AI intervening there? All right. Now, uh, diagnosis is something which is the doctors and the specialists mm -hmm. cup of tea, right? The experts, experts mm -hmm. in that. So AI certainly is not uh, something which is taking away their expertise. Mm -hmm. It's complementing that expertise, complementing the specialists, complementing the, 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 the doctors. So mm -hmm. earlier what used to happen is even the medical practitioner, expert mm -hmm. medical practitioners, they used to go back in time, look at the entire historical information and data available, check the reports mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Now, with the AI coming on board, AI can actually go ahead and scan the entire images mm -hmm. of all the lab reports and everything, you know, and they can pass on, the AI can pass on all the analytical information with the appropriate help mm -hmm. complementing the diagnosis and tell the doctor and give the information to the doctor, you know what, hey, there's a problem here, mm -hmm. which the doctor can analyze further, give its expert advice, go back to the customer and say, you know what, I have checked, I have reviewed, I have reviewed all these things and you know what, you are fine, there is no problem or there is a problem, mm. you know. So the quick decision making is something AI is definitely helping in. Uh, earlier, probably diagnosis used to take probably 24 to 48 hours. Now it can be done in minutes or seconds. As such. So imagine the same doctor or the specialist can serve many number of people. Second, quality comes into picture. Yeah. Second, this is aided by factual data and information which is already kind of canned by the AI. And then on top of that, the doctor is coming, the specialist mm. coming and giving its expert opinion and advice as such. So that's where the AI is really, really helping the diagnosis of, of uh, treatments, mm. diagnosis of conditions, mm. and as a result of which treatment becomes very useful. Well, that's very interesting indeed. Now you mentioned you're across 1,500 cities in the Sorry. country, which means, you know, there is actually remote monitoring in remote areas as well. Yes. Now, how does AI step in here? Uh, you know, how can it make that better? Uh, like I hinted at that uh, earlier as well. Uh, AI especially is helping in this entire remote monitoring, mm -hmm. remote processing, remote triage. Yeah. Uh, a remote consulting as well. Mm -hmm. So imagine, I'll give you a use case as well. There is somebody sitting uh, in a, a rural, rural uh, Indian mm -hmm. uh, area, right? And then there is a specialist sitting in, in a metro region far away, but the specialist is very good at that specific sort of condition as mm -hmm. such, including diagnosis, treatment, and so on and so forth. So how does this rural-based person reach out to that specialist? It's very difficult. But with the advent of AI, what is happening is 
we sort of go ahead and get this entire telemedicine coming into picture, right? With the help of telemedicine, remote monitoring, remote consult is possible, mm -hmm. right? Now, on top of that, when the session is going on, like we have this particular yeah. session right now, the, when the session is going on, telemedicine so the session is going on, the doctor is talking and mm -hmm. looking at that particular patient, there are AI tools which can actually diagnose yeah. conditions and problems. AI technology in medical mm -hmm. has reached that extent, wherein on the lens itself, mm -hmm. And I'll give an example. You see these creases on our forehead. Yeah. Everybody has creases. Yeah. Uh, there are wrinkles mm. uh, on our faces, and there are certain certain other uh, sort of uh, identification marks. If you can you know? see that my creams are not working, what do you mean? What wrinkles? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, having said that, there are AI tools okay. based on the creases and the 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 look on the face, yes. and so and so for the wrinkles and yeah. all. Uh, they can. And I wouldn't say diagnose, mm -hmm. but they can actually go ahead and understand mm -hmm. and pass on certain information okay. to the specialist and the doctor saying that there's a problem here. There mm -hmm. might be a problem here. Look at this, you know. Okay. So there are red flags which AI can actually mm -hmm. go ahead and inform the doctors and bring it uh, to the doctor as such. And the doctors then further can probe. Yeah. You know, earlier it probably may not be possible, mm -hmm. you know. Somebody sitting from 1,000 miles uh, from here, it wasn't possible at all. Now, everything is possible due to AI. And also, it's possible due to uh, a combination of this telemedicine, teleconsult. And on top of that, you're now uh, bringing in the entire AI tool mm -hmm. and making it possible for both the connectivity as well as making sure the diagnosis is appropriate. It's speedy, mm -hmm. it's accurate, it's quality-oriented. Mm -hmm. And also, at the same time, it is this price. Uh, now, somebody watching this might wonder, why can't I enter my symptoms into chat GPT myself? Earlier, we were all Googling our symptoms, but we always got the most alarming results with right. those. So we stopped doing that. But they might be thinking, if chat GPT is also using AI, why don't I just use that instead of paying a healthcare platform? Right. So uh, it's an absolutely pertinent question. Uh, the reason behind this is, and that is another reason why, especially the medical fraternity, mm. you should hate Google. <laughs> you know, and, and you will be surprised when I, if I tell you that a lot of medical practitioners mm. will see uh, a signage nowadays, mm. you know, uh, outside the clinic saying mm. that, you know what, if you have come here after Googling, please do not enter. Really? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, <laughs> well, that, it was that, uh, that an issue, you know. However, AI is a bit different. You know, uh, I believe that although Google has a lot of information, uh, it has access to a lot of data points and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. AI, especially like GPTs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they have access to millions and billions of data points. Mm -hmm. you know? Like say, for example, uh, Gemini. Gemini is from yeah. Google, right? And of course, ChatGPT is from OpenAI. Mm -hmm. How will you feel if I tell you mm. that Gemini and, and OpenAI chat GPT, mm. they use 1.3 trillion transactions mm. okay, per second, per transaction, oh. or, or per use case. Oh. You know, that's humongous. Yeah. Now, that's the kind of reach and mm. access to data points that these GPTs have mm. and this AI has. And it is extremely powerful in terms of its speed, mm. its understanding. You know, and uh, the way it has been trained. So it is probably 100,000 times better than just kind of passing a query to Google and Google is kind of giving you some response. The, and if you compare, and you can do it yourself, right? You ask the same question on Google and the same query, uh, you can ask a GPT model, you know, an AI enabled GPT model, and you will realize the, the, the difference. Mm. There's a stark difference in the response that you will get. The, for the only reason that GPTs are trained and they have access to massive amount of data in a, in a fraction of a second. Mm. You know, and they not only go back in time, uh, but they compare the, the, the information and data points before even responding uh, uh, to the person who is kind of questioning. You know, for you, Ninad, personally, did you ever have a wow moment with AI in health? Uh, several. Okay. Absolutely several. I'll give you a use case as sure. well, like a live moment which is which has happened. Mm -hmm. And that this is not generally for the organization, but mm -hmm. the entire industry uh, sort of per mm -hmm. se. 
so there was this, and it is in, available in public domain now. Mm-hmm. You can actually Google it or or <laughs> GPT. <it as> well. <laughs> so um, there is this particular uh, doctor here in in India. Okay, I can't name him, but and then there is this particular patient who is elsewhere in any other uh, overseas country, and uh, there was this that particular patient was going through acute and chronic conditions and then a medical accident and so on and so forth. The doctors are trying to revive that particular patient and so on. And, and then there is this, this expert physician who is a specialist who is in India. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, he cannot travel there. The patient cannot travel this side. So how does one, one yeah. do it? And that's when this entire telemedicine comes into picture. Yeah. On life monitor, whilst the patient is being operated upon, yeah. So imagine if there is a digitally created robotic avatar, mm. okay, who is right next to the bedside of the particular patient along mm. with the surgeon. So imagine there is a robot surgeon with you. Mm. And this particular physician out here, through virtual re- mm. reality and augmented reality, on top of that, you add the mm. AI tool, he is not only guiding, but he's performing that surgery sitting like 5,000, 10,000 miles from that particular patient. So imagine the kind of ki- kind of wow factor. And the wow factor came into picture when that patient was absolutely fine after the surgery. At one point in time, doctors and the family members, unfortunately, had given up hope. And this happened. And this could happen only because there's a combination of telemedicine, triage services, doctors, experts available. And then on top of that, you have the robotics and then you have top of that AI coming into picture. Now imagine the entire universe mm. uh, of technology coming into picture and trying to save this particular person's life. And what important mm. than saving a person's life, you know, that is the wow moment that I ever came across. And by the way, mm. I happened to be mm. with the doctor whilst he was kind of addressing, whilst he was giving the instructions uh, to the remote team mm. out there. And it was happening right in front of my eyes. So, uh, and so this is not hearsay. This is whatever what we call as Ako de Kahal. Mm-hmm. Wow! <laughs> you know, in movies we always see medical miracles happen. Right. But now, from an expert like you, a credible source, to hear about something that's like right. that, that's really reassuring. Sure. <laughs> and no pun intended at all. Sure. Vinad, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Vinad, it's been so enlightening speaking to you. And it's great to know the strides AI is making in healthcare. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this show and giving us your valuable time. Thank you so much, Shilpa. And thank you to the Economic Times uh, uh, team for having me here. I think it's a great conversation. I learned a lot uh, from, from the audience uh, out here as well and from, from you guys. I think you have done a, you're doing a very good job. Uh, and uh, hopefully we should be able to sort of connect and the audience will be able to kind of uh, accept and, and observe and then process it and then probably hopefully learn from it uh, as well. So thank you so much once again for having me here. Thank you. You know, that is our endeavor to make sure that AI is accessible to everyone in terms of the information that we put out there. And they also understand how it is being used in various industries. So today you learned about how AI is being tapped into for health and how it's making your life healthier. And for more such episodes, you know what to do. Stay tuned to AI Horizon. 